I'm feeling great. It's um, it's coming along extremely well. Uh, it's definitely been a long process. Uh, I'll definitely I'll admit to that. Um, but I feel like I'm on I'm past the hump and I'm throwing long toss and we're about to get on the get off the mound and uh, we're we're definitely we're getting there for sure. Opening day uh, possibility, you think? I, I I don't see why not at all. Yeah, I mean, as far as the scheduling goes, we're the scheduling is for opening day. Um, so unless there's any setbacks or anything, which I hope there's not, uh, I I think I should be ready. You're the type of guy who, you know, had a lot of success with how your ball moves when you pitch. Are you still seeing the same movement as you're kind of throwing, playing long toss stuff like that? Yeah, it's still sinking. <laughs> any harder? I have no idea. As long as it's going down, I don't care how hard it is. <laughs> Richard, so much has been talked about how how nice of a guy you are. How has that been Thank able <laughs> to <laughs> how's that, how's that been able to nice. to help out with uh, some of the new guys that are coming on? Like, how can you kind of mentor those guys, being that you know good role model for them? Yeah, I think it's it, it's just tough for anyone. It, it, a new environment, the big leagues. You know, we've worked so hard our whole lives to get to this point, and all of a sudden you're just no matter what you do or think. You're not ready for it. You're just not ready to be called up or whatever. You know, it's always like you get a call at midnight and then you, or you get a call at four in the afternoon for a seven o'clock game. It's never like this perfect story. So it's just to just try and help guys through their first few days, first couple months, just till they get acclimated to the situations. And pitching is pitching, hitting is hitting. The game is the game. I think, in my opinion, you know, obviously the competition's better each level you go up, but. For me, the comfortable part was on the mound, my rookie year, and everything else, like knowing where to go, what to do, who to talk to, who not to talk to, all that stuff, when to eat, you know, all these like unwritten rules and all that stuff was like, the hard part for me. So I think just kind of guiding guys in that aspect um, what is really helpful for them. Well, Richard, uh, what has been your first impression of the uh, new staff, uh, Brandon Hyde and uh, Michael Elias. Oh, I think it, I think they're they bring a lot of positivity and, and really great things. And obviously, their previous experiences in, in baseball speak for themselves. Uh, you know, I I don't think the way things were run before were wrong at all. I, I you know I have nothing but great things to say about Buck or or Dan. But I think that um, the new guys will do a great job as well. Can you kind of walk us through your progression this offseason? When did you start throwing and, and when did you ramp it up? Yeah, um, so let's see. Hurt in the middle of June, surgery a couple days after. Um, six weeks later, I got out of the sling, which was, boy, I don't know if any of you guys have been in slings, but it's not, that's the worst part. Um, and then, you, then it's range of motion stuff um, for six weeks. Uh, and, then, and then you start strengthening the shoulder once you get your full range of motion back um, and that that actually is puts you about four months uh, you're four months out and then you start throwing um, and then throwing is throwing is four months you know you're just pretty much throwing I've been throwing for three months now uh, we took we actually because of it's funny the surgeon was like you actually got hurt at a perfect time so you can Plan it for spring training, and so we took a month. I threw for a month, took a month off, and now I'm throwing again. Kind of like test it out. Okay, take time off because we don't want you to throw for a year straight, and then do a normal off-season throwing program where it's long toss, bullpens. You know, kind of build yourself right up in a spring training and opening day. So it, in that aspect, it's I guess you could say it's that's gonna that's working out well. Where it's not like if there was any setback, I'd be out of time. There was a little bit of leeway there. In, with my throwing program, but yeah, it's four months throwing, and then it was, I think it was six months off the mound, but we're waiting a little bit longer till about seven months. I think the last time we talked to you was July 31st, just to, when you came to, yeah. to Yan Yankee Stadium, and then, you know, a few minutes later, you know, you're, there were more trades. Yeah. As, as a guy who was part of the club, but at that point not right. part of a club, how did you, how did you feel? Yeah, honestly, it was it was definitely a, an interesting situation where I went when I left after I got hurt and I went I went to do my rehab, and then I came back and it was a whole new team and then and and even now like I'm like man some of these guys that were in the big leagues for a month I I am meeting for the first time so it's definitely it's definitely interesting how but yeah I mean guys come and go all the time teams change you can't so it's it's part of baseball you can't really. 
obviously we lost a lot of great players and you know but hopefully the next you know people pick up the slack coming in behind them so and uh, you know obviously we can we can only get better from where we were last year in my opinion so we got that going for us so uh, I think that we I think we will come from a Yankees organization before this that does things pretty progressively in terms of player development and giving people a lot of tools and data to improve themselves and I know at Cressy they do a lot of that stuff where you're rehabbing for people who have been in this organization for maybe only this right. only organization what type of stuff are they going to be introduced to this year maybe that can help a player get better that you've had in your past I it seems like yeah there's going to be a lot more information available to the player and, and it's going to be definitely it seems like it'll be up to the player to take advantage of the information um, it for in my opinion there's a fine line between using the information to your advantage and overanalyzing the situation to where you just, you know, you can't use your instincts on the mound to make pitches you need to or do what you're needing to do. So I think that that's going to be like based on individuality and what people are comfortable with doing and stuff like that. For me, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what information and how people analyze the pitches I throw and what I do well and what I don't do well and then comparing it to what I think I do well and don't do well and seeing how that lines up, you know. but. Um, I think that the advanced analytics are not as easy to not don't work as well for me as a sinker baller because like I just throw sinkers and cutters you know and it's just a matter of which one am I going to throw but and like that was the same as like with Brit, Zach Britton you know where he just throws sinkers and it's kind of just you just throw sinkers and hope they don't hit it type thing but guys that throw good sliders and spin the ball well and and have high spin rate and all those all those all those all those kind of good things you have to kind of figure out the game plan on how to the best place to throw a fastball for me I know the best place to throw my fastball is down in the zone like if I throw high sinkers I'm probably going to give up a bunch of home runs so you know it but some guys they're only getting in trouble by throwing a high, uh, high spin rate fastball in the bottom of the zone as opposed to the top of the zone. So we'll see. Should be interesting, though, definitely, I think. Richard, there's been a lot of lefties in a bullpen just uh, recently. You have Tanner Scott, Paul Fry, yourself. Um, how, how interesting is it just to see that you all might carry maybe three or four lefties in a bullpen? Yeah, and it, there was a while there for I, where I was the only lefty um, you know, in the last couple of years, parts of the last couple of years where there'd be stretches where I was the only lefty. So, um, yeah, I think it, it, but I think in today's game, it, you have to be able to get lefties and righties out. So I think that it, it doesn't really matter if we have three lefties and four righties because everybody's got to be able to get everybody out. And it's just a matter of which situation to bring the guy in, whether he's, he can give you length or he's a one inning guy. But I think that everybody in the bullpen will be able to get lefties and righties out.